Good morning, class. My name is Olegun Galakia, CEO of Marketing Tutors. You are welcome to SS2. Welcome to SS2 class. Good to see you. Today, we are going to be looking at logarithm of numbers greater than 1. Logarithm of numbers greater than 1. So, after this, let's look at what we mean by logarithm. At the end of the lesson, students should be able to recall and express a given number in standard form. You should be able to recall and express a given number in standard form. You should also be able to recall the use of logarithm tables to perform calculations involving numbers greater than 1. You should be able to recall the use of logarithm tables to perform calculations involving numbers greater than 1. Now, what are logarithm tables? These are also called four figure tables. You should also be able to use the log uh, logarithm tables, which is four figure tables, to perform calculations involving multiplications, division, powers, and roots of numbers greater than one. We're still going to look at numbers less than one. So we're looking at these operations multiplications, division, powers, and roots of numbers greater than one. Let's go. So before we look at logarithm, we need to know what standard form is. Standard form is just a short way of expressing large and very small numbers. It's a short way of expressing large and very small numbers. What do I mean by this? Numbers that are very, very big, in billions, trillions, and also numbers that are smaller than one, or very, very small. We can use standard form to represent them. Now, how can a number be represented in standard form? A number is said to be in standard form if you can express it in the form a times 10 raised power n. Where a is what? Where a is a number between 1 and 10. a is a number between 1 and 10. So any number that must be a must be a number between 1 and 10. Not 1, not 10, but a number between 1 and 10. And it can be decimal. Then n is what? n is a positive or negative integer. Positive or negative integer. Integers are whole numbers. So let's go on. Look at examples here. Write the following in standard form. 367. 367 is 3.67 times 100. How did I get this? Now, you assume there's a decimal point here. Shift the decimal backward in such a way that what you are going to have will be a number that is less than 10. 367 is more than 10. If you say 36.7, it's also more than 10. The number that is between 1 and 10 will be 3.67 which is 3.678. And because you shifted the decimal backward two times, it's going to be times 100. So, and 100 is what? It's 10 raised to power 2. So, your answer is 3.67 3.67 times 10 raised to power 2. Same goes for 4789. By the time you shift the decimal, it will be 1, 2, 3. You have shifted the decimal three times backward. So, that means 4.789 times 1,000. Shifted the decimal three times by one. So and ten one thousand is what ten is by three. So the answer is four point seven eight nine times ten is by three. And you see that four point seven eight nine is a number that is between one and ten. Three point six seven is also a number between one and ten. So we are right. The same goes for six or seven point eight nine. How will you get a number less than ten here? It is when you have six point zero seven eight nine. And how many times did you shift it? Shifted it two times by four, that's times 100. And 100 is 10 to power 2. So all these are the ways in which you can do what? You can get or express numbers in standard form. Let's look at this number 5. This number is a number less than 1. How do we solve this? Shift the decimal to a position where you can now get a number less than 10. So let's shift it. 1, 2, 3. So it is 9.87. How many times did you shift it? You shifted it three times where? Forward. So that means it is divided by 1,000. Three times, three times forward is what? Divided by 1,000. And 1,000 is what? 10 is to the minus 3. So it will be 9.7 times 10 to the minus 3. And that's how you are going to go on and on to do this. So let's continue. So let's now look at logarithm of numbers greater than 1. What do you understand by logarithm? Logarithm of numbers have been obtained from four figure tables, which is the same thing as what? Logarithm tables. And logarithm is divided into two, characteristics and mantissa. 
the whole number or the integer part, the one without decimal, the one that comes before decimal is the whole number, is the characteristics. And the one that is after the decimal is called the mantis. The decimal part is called the mantis. So, log is very into characteristics and the mantis. Let's look at an example here. Use tables to find the logarithm of 850.9. Logarithm of 850.9. 850.9 can be written in standard form as 8.509 times 100 because you shifted this two times. Two times 100. And 100 is what? 10 raised to power 2. So, but when you look at configure table, the log of 8.509 is what? Is 0 0.9299. That is from the log, log reading table. So your 8.509, which is this, 8.509, will now be what? Will now be 10 raised to power that log reading that you uh, will be able to get from four figure table. So it is 10 raised to power that number times 100 is what? It's 10 raised to power what? 10 raised to power 2. So 8.509 will now be 10 raised to power 0 0.9299 plus 2. Because this is the form of indices, and in indices you add together. So if you add 0 0.9299 plus 2, 2 is what? 2 is the same thing as 2.0. 2.0. So when you add this together, you're going to have 2.9299. So the log of this is going to give you the log of 850.9 will now give you what? 2.9299. Another method you can use is this. Now you are giving you have to find the log of 850.9. What is the characteristics of this number? How many numbers do you have before the decimal? You have three numbers, three digits. One, two, three. So the characteristics has what? Three digits. So the rule is that you subtract one from the digits. So three minus one will give you two. Then you now go to your four because you will check 85 under zero difference five difference what five. So 85 under zero will give you 85 under zero. Then difference five will give you 0 0.9299 from four because table. So what you just need to do is to say okay that. 0 0.9299 added to what? To 2. Which 2? This 2 that you arrive at here. And that will give you 2.9299. Now let's look at antilog. Antilog now. Antilog is the opposite of a log reading. Antilog is the opposite of a log reading. Now this example says you should find the number whose log reading is this. That means indirectly find the antilog of this number. Find the antilog of this number. So what are the steps? Find the antilog of 1.8385. Now, what is the characteristics? The characteristic is what is one because we have one number before the decimal. So it is one. That is one digit. And the matrix is what is the number after the decimal, which is 8385, which is 0 0.8385. Now, from your antilog reading table, in four figure table you have log reading, antilog. And so many other tables there. So now let's open to antilog reading tables. When you open to antilog reading tables, the number corresponding to a three corresponding to zero point eight three eight five is what is six eight eight seven. Six eight eight seven. So eight three eight eighty three under eight will give you six eight eight seven. Then difference five will give you eight. And when you add it together, you have six eight nine five. And since the characteristic is what is one for antilog, now you are adding one to it. So add one to that characteristic, it will now give you two. When it gives you two, then you now write your what you arrive at on the antilog table, which is 6895. And since what you now have after adding one is two, that means we count two numbers from the front here one, two, and you put your decimal. So you now have 68.95 as the what as the antidote of 1.8385. Okay, let's go on. What 
what are the rules for the use of logarithms? If you have any numbers that multiply each other, the rule is that you must find the, the logarithm of the numbers and add them together. If you have numbers that are dividing each other, the rule is that you find the logarithm of each number, then subtract the logarithm of the denominator from the logarithm of the words numerator. We're still going to look at an example. Then if you have any number that is raised to a particular power, you find the logarithm of the number and you then multiply it by the power of the index. So if I have 2.3 raised to the power 5, I find the logarithm of 2.3, I will now multiply that logarithm by 5, where it's raised to the power 5, which is raised to the power 4, I multiply the logarithm by 4. Then the fourth rule is under roots. If you have any number that is square root, cube root, fourth root, and so on, the rule is that you find the logarithm of the number and you divide it by that root. If it is square root, you find the logarithm of the number and you divide by 2. If it is cube root, you find the logarithm of the number and you divide by 3. If it is fifth root, you find the logarithm of the number and divide by 5. So in each case, to obtain your final answer, you have to find the antilog of your results. Okay, let's look at this example now. Example 1. If I'm not using four figure tables, 19.28 times 2.987 times 195.8. So you set your table like this, number and log. Since what you have here, everything here is what? Multiplication. So the rule is that you write the number, the three numbers they are here, then you know how we got, how we arrive at the log here. You have two numbers here as digits, as characteristics. Two minus one will give you one. That will be one point. Then you check on your four figure table, 19 under two, difference eight, add them together. Give you 2851. The characteristic here is what? 1. 1 minus 1, 0. You put 0 here. Point. Then, what we got table? 29 under 8 different 7. Add them together to give you 4752. Then, here, the characteristic is 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. We have 2. Point. Then, what we got table? 19 under 5 different 8. To give you 2918. Then, add all these logarithms together to give you 4.0521. Now, what are you supposed to do here? Since you have 4 here, the rule is that you add 1 to it. So 4 plus 1 will give you what? Will give you 5. So that means you're going to have 5 numbers here. You're going to have 5 numbers here. So then you check on your antelope table 0, 5 under 2, 0, 5 difference 2, or 0, 5 under 2 difference 1. When you add everything together, it will give you 1127. But 1127 is just four digits, and you have five here. After adding one to it, you have five here. So, so you have five here. So that means you're going to add a zero here to make it up to what? To five digits. So you now have 11270. So now you have to five digits. Well, it must be five digits. But you have four here. So after adding one to the five, so what you have here must be up to five digits, what five digits. That's why we added zero here. So let's continue. Once again, my name is Olivier Galakinia, the CEO of Matic Tutors. Example two, we are to evaluate using four figure tables, 189.7 divided by 34.8. So set your table, you have the two numbers here, three digits, three minus one is two, that's two points, two digits, as that is two, two minus one is one, one point. Then 18 under 9.7 will give you 2781. 34 under 8 will give you 5416. And you should have to subtract because this is division. So you must subtract the log elements. And when you subtract, you get 0 0.7365. So you are going to add one to this zero, to this zero. When you add one to this zero, it becomes what? It becomes one. Then you now use your antelope anti -log table to find 73 under 6 difference 5. And that will give you 5451. Five, so you have 5451. Five, but the number here is 1. So that means after the first number, you put your decimal from the front. Then it's now 5.451. Let's go ahead. Example 3. This has to do with what? Roots. 50.64 raised to power 5. And from the rule, anything that has to do with power, you have to multiply. So 50.64, the characteristic is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1, so you have 1 point. 
They are from your four figure table, not leading. 50 under 6 difference 4 will give you 7045. And because it is raised to power 5, you multiply 1.7045 times 5, which will give you 8.5225, which is what you have here. Now, by the time you now add 1 to it, by the time you add 1 to it, it becomes what? It becomes 9. So, let's find the antelog of 52 under 2 difference 5. Antelog of 52 under 2 difference 5 will give you 3331. Four digit, 3331. But because you have 9 here, you have to make it up to what? Up to 9 digits. So that means, since you have 3331, which is 4 digits, you are going to have five, add 5 zeros to it. So when you add 5 zeros to it, if everything, all the digits have become what? 9. Another one here is what? Example 4, which is, has to do with what? Roots. So 605.8, this is pot roots. That is, pot root means the number that you multiply by itself four times, that will give you 605.8. So the characteristics is what? It's 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. That's 2 points. Then 60 under 5 difference 8 will give you 7824. And because it is pot roots, you now divide 2.7824, divide by 4. And that will give you 0 0.6956, which is what you have here. And don't forget that you have to do what again? Add one to this. When you add one to it, it becomes 0 0.1. 0 plus 1, that is 0. 0 plus 1, sorry, which is what? 1. Then, what is 69 under 5 different 6 from antelope? 69 under 5 different 6. That will give you 4962. 4962. And because you have one here, so that means after the first digit from the front, you put your decimal. So the answer will be 4.962. On the last slide now, you have this 508.6 raised to power 3 times this square root of this number. Everything divided by what? 7.95 raised to power 2 times cube root of 9010. So you have some numbers on the numerator. These numbers on the numerator will be placed here. Then you have numerator. The numbers on the numerator will be placed here. Then you have denominator. Then you find the antilog of 50 under a different 6. Sorry, the log of 50 under a different 6. Then multiply by 3 because it's raised to power 3. So give it this. Then log of 87 under 1 different 0 will give you 4.9400. You divide it by 2 because it's a square root. It will give it this. Then you add the log with it. It will give you 10.5892, which is what you have here. Do the same thing for the denominator. 0 0.9004, this will be 2 will be times 2, which is equal to this. The key root of this will be the log of 9010 divided by 3. We'll give you this, then add them together. We'll give you 3.119, we'll put it here. Then because of this long division, we we'll subtract. We'll give you 7.4702. And when you now find the antilog of 47 under 0 difference 2, we'll give you 2953. But because this is 7 here, and when you add 1 to it, it will give you what? It will give you 8. So that means you are going to make it 8 digits. And already you have 4 digits here, 2953. So that means add 4, four zeros to it to make it up to what? So 8 digits. Exactly. So if you have any question, you can visit us on our website and also on our Facebook pages. Thank you.